So welcome guys. We reviewed Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse early last week. It was fairly uh, spoiler-less mm-hmm. in our talking. No spoilers at all. Yeah, that's what I said, spoiler-less. Less. Oh, right. It wasn't, it wasn't so spoilerific. Anyway, now we're going to do a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen Spider-Verse, then you're an idiot for listening to this episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I do not feel sorry for you. So let's get straight into it. What a fucking movie, still, right? Yeah, man, I'm still buzzing from it. Yeah, I, it was a very hard movie to review because it's so like to discuss any of it's really quality, at least like storytelling or characters. It's a lot of spoilers in here, so I'm glad that we can come together. We can discuss this without any shackles um, on in terms of the conversation. And yeah, as Dan said, you are an idiot if you decide to. <laughs> Click uh, spoiler review and then be like, oh, like you guys are supposed to spoil us. And you guys have had the whole weekend to see it. So um, if you haven't seen it, don't be mad um, that we're doing a spoiler review this early. It's been out for three, four days, depending on where you live. So I think that's plenty of time. If not, go and see this movie as soon as possible and then come back here and then we can discuss it in the comment section. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah, this movie, man, I'm still buzzing. It's, it's still a hard movie to really articulate. I just came out of the IMAX screening for it. As soon as I saw this movie, I'm like, okay, this needs to be seen in IMAX because, you know, high resolution, bigger screen, better sound, that score. <laughs> Hits ha- more. Have you listened to the score? No. No. Oh, go and do yourself a favor. Go listen to that score, man. It is oh, it's just so good. I mean, I think it fits better in the movie as listening, uh, rather than listening to it solo, but there's still some great tracks in there. Yeah. Um, I don't know where we start with this in terms, I guess, just Miles Morales. Um, yep, his character <clears throat> and his, uh, what mm. I'm trying to say, his development throughout this two-hour film was huge yeah. for him mm. as well. He was going, at the start of the film, he was swinging around um, pretty much being Spider-Man and not really um, understanding the consequences of his sort of actions. Yeah. And then, obviously, as the movie played out, he realized mm-hmm. how big, like, a small thing he did what, what's the guy's name spot spot yeah spot you know mm. let, letting someone like that not taking him so seriously has completely fucked him up <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like caused like you know uh chaos around like multiple universes as well yeah what do you i'm very interested to see how you think it should be resolved because obviously if he saves his dad then everyone dies in that uh planet um so yeah like how would how would it even be resolved because I, I I was watching and I'm like, God, like Miles, because he obviously escaped, so go save his dad and whatnot. And I'm like, did he listen to everything that 2099 was saying? Probably not. Yeah. And I, I get where he is, like emotionally, like, oh, I can do both. I can do both. But I mean, I don't know what the resolve is. He, is he going to have to choose? He's going to have to choose. And mm. pretty, I think his dad's going to end up dying. Yeah. I think it will be his big impactful moment. For him. It's going to be an emotional moment. Yeah his, yeah, his canon event, so to speak. Yeah. You'd think it'd be Uncle Aaron um, being his canon event. I always thought it was the Uncle Ben's or that. I did, but then they introduced this whole captain thing. Yeah. Which was weird. Which was weird, yeah. And, and that takes me to um, Gwen Stacy. Now, by the end of the movie, Gwen Stacy's dad quit being the captain. So does that mean in terms of her world's canon event, she's good is, or is it just gonna be another captain i wonder where what, that i thought ties. her canon event was peter parker dying i would assume that yeah but i mean they they like kind of like referenced it in the movie where it's just like but your dad's the captain and then she's like yeah i know man it was, it was kind of like sad yeah. it's because she knows it's coming kind of thing yeah yeah what did did you like how they did made her kind of like a co-lead in this and how they built her story and character yeah it was good yeah, I definitely got a lot more background to her, um, Gwen Stacy and her, like trying to find more friends and yeah. fit in elsewhere. Because um, mm. after losing her best friend Peter, obviously that destroyed her. Yeah. <laughs> so, especially yeah. when she was the one that did it. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, I don't know. I found it hard eh, when her dad was just like, you know, reading the Mar- Miranda uh-huh. rights. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of like, wow, like this guy's a dick. He's doing his job. <laughs> But she did nothing wrong, so it's a, he's doing a bad job. Um, That's true, yeah. But yeah, no, I loved Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099. 
perfect for this. Yeah. He was really good at comic book characters. But it didn't truly sound like him. Like no, it sounded a bit different, too. Eh? Yeah. Which is yeah. good. Which is what if you you're an acting you get cast in a voice acting role, change up your fucking voice. Who at you? Aquafina. Oh, Aquafina. I thought you were gonna <laughs> run with Chris Pratt there. Which I think would have been a little bit fair, but Aquafina is definitely at least Chris yeah. Pratt put on a bit of an accent for Mario. Yeah. Aquafina like, though. Aquafina just didn't for anything. I think she, it's just because she has a unique voice, I guess. Yeah. Um, but no, I loved him, man. He was like really intense and stuff like that. I don't know how far he is in terms of like, would you define him as a villain in the story? I would, yeah. Yeah? He's not like a out and out villain, but mm. his like motivations are pretty, or his actions are quite villain-esque, you know? Yeah. Um, going into a world where he died, where oh, his yeah. died just to like be with her kid and yeah. whatnot. Mm. And then, like, having control over this whole entire spider universe thing. Uh, what, what's it called? Earth One or Earth Prime? Earth something? What's this? Where all the spider people are? Nova York or something? Uh, Nova York. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Earth One, I guess. Yeah. Spider vs. Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much him, him having control over all that. Him, like, giving orders to the spider people to stop Mar- Miles from leaving. Mm-hmm. You know, like, him just, like, Going above and beyond to like stop him. Yeah. It's pretty villain esque. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you can also say Miles is also a villain for wanting to save his dad and pretty much destroy so many universes. Well, they're done. Yeah. That's what I really love about this movie because I'm like, God, I completely see where Miles is coming from. Like, uh, I'll probably be in the same position trying to do the same thing. But then I, I see um, Spider Man uh, 99's point of view as well. Yeah, because he's coming from a spot where you know he went to go and be with his daughter and be happy again, and then saw the damage that he did. His kid literally got erased out of his arms yeah. while like running away, and that's that would be horrifying as a parent. Um, so I could see his like uh, why he would want to be so in control of this and be like, no one else can feel go through what I had to go through. Like that, this is what needs to happen, and I, I love the whole message of it being like, you know, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. And this is what I hated about homecoming and far from home. There's no sacrifice in there. It was just goofy, ha ha MCU forced, dumb, dumb comedy humor. Um, yeah. it's just a little rant there. <laughs> uh, those movies kind of boil my blood a bit, even though I do like homecoming. Um, but yeah, no, no sacrifice in there. And Spider-Man has a lot of tragedy. In, in his life, which is why he's such a popular comic book character. Same with um, Batman. You know, I think I think the more tragic they ha- their lives are, the more the audience can actually like resonate with that character and you know appreciate the character a little bit more. So the fact that these movies, you know, No Way Home, Spider Verse, and this one here, they're doing that, they're sending that message. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the ending? The way it ended. Dude, I, just after my um, IMAX screening, well, it doesn't really count in our premiere one because we were like kind of sat isolated from everyone else. But I was like in around, like in the middle of a bunch of people um, for Spider-Verse. And as soon as that closed, everyone's like, whoa. Like I heard like gasping, like, oh my God, like kind of thing. I was like, oh, wow. I've not heard this much reaction in a long time. Um, but yeah, no, that. The ending, man, as soon as it ends. I, that's like the one for the movies that it ends. I'm like, nah, you, you got to keep going. Like, <laughs> There's so many points throughout that last half an hour where you think it's going to end, but it just keeps going and going and going and going. It happened again, bro, and I've seen the movie. <laughs> that, I, I don't know if that's like intentionally like fucking with us because there was so much in there. Like, I obviously knew that, you know, those points felt like endings, and but I know where it actually ends. But yeah, again, it just felt like it was closing it up. It like zoomed into his face and it's just like a black screen. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it was the end. And then it's not. <laughs> um, but that, that ending I think was brilliant. Um, you know, how he's like, he's like, you know, crying and like a real challenge to get home just to be safe again. Um, and then like, he like tells his mom, who's really not his mom, it's in the other dimension. Yeah. And then he like glitches. And then you, you see like Gwen on, at his universe and then him at um, Dimension 42 or whatever, Earth 42. Um, and then it's just like that whistle that's like part of the Spider-Verse score. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like a real dark whistle. And then it's like, oh, fuck, that. he's in the other universe. And then they figured it out. And I was like, holy shit. And then, yeah, and then, like, there's so many clues to, like, what is happening next um, with, oh, what did I say? I think, like, you see, like, uh, you know when it, you see the future from Spot? That in that brief moment, you see like the prowler thing there and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> him ending with being in the prowler and the, the gangs back together, you know, the good guys from the first one and this one here, it, it's it's setting up a you know a big beyond yeah, <laughs> beyond the spiders, man. It, it's setting up something that's going to be big. I hope it. I hope it is, man. And I pray. I pray it doesn't get delayed. No, I don't uh, think it would. Yeah, but it's an intense ending. It's like holy shit, like. It's about to go down. What do, what do you think? Him, obviously him finding, him realizing that he took away that, that universe is Spider-Man. Mm. So that was the one universe that didn't have Spider-Man. And then he, him, Miles, and that universe ended up becoming the Prowler was huge. Yeah. That would have been intense. It would have been even more intense if Prowler was actually his dad. Yeah. <clears throat> that would have been really, like, really, really impactful because he's, like, trying to save his dad, mm. and then just finds out that his dad in this universe is a bad guy. Yeah, that's that would be that would so intense. Um, obviously, I want to know how he's going to react when he like meets up with like Gwen and stuff again because they they end on bad terms. Yeah, <clears throat> with not just Gwen but also Peter Parker as well. Yeah, um, all ended on bad terms with Miles. Um, mm. so I wonder if he'll actually be forgiving or if he'll like resent them first and then obviously come around. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Obviously, there's like a, you know, some romantic tension between Gwen and um, Miles. Do you think we'll see them by the end of Beyond? You know, as a as a couple, romantic or kind of admit that they need they can't be together despite wanting to be. Where do you think that relationship goes? No, I don't think they can get together. Mm. I think because the whole thing is about them been friends and pretty much you know Gwen misses had mm. lost her friend and yeah. found another one in Miles and Miles having her as a friend as well mm-hmm. um, obviously Miles has a bit more feelings for her than um, Gwen does yeah <clears throat> but I think it just has to end on them being friends yeah I, th- I think Gwen uh, does obviously have feelings for Miles as well at least deeply cares about him I think it's going to be a sad point in um beyond the Spider-Verse, because the characters that we like, or at least the audience, you know, is rooting for, they're all good friends, but they're all from different universes. And as this movie clearly states, there's a purpose for each Spider-Person in their universe is to protect it and all that kind of stuff. I, th- I think it's going to be, you know, sad goodbyes between all the Spider-People and beyond. Yeah, I, wonder, um, I wonder if they're going to cut, cut them off. Like, you know how they have that device that can make them... Uh, go in between universes. I wonder if that's just gonna end like someone breaks it or Spider Man twenty ninety nine destroys whatever uh, I don't know thing he has that help makes him do that. So that way they're all just back in the universes and can't intertwine. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm I, I think by the time the movie finishes, you know, Spider Man twenty ninety nine will be a a nice guy or like a more nice guy. Um he'll find like an alternative way to manage all this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, Prowler, Miles versus Miles, it's going to be, uh, I wonder how long they're going to spend on that. Yeah. Because they got that and then they have to deal with Spot and then we have to deal with whatever Miles chooses. Miles chooses. Between his dad and, you know, the Spider-Verse. Yeah. The canon event. So there's a lot, a lot to do in this next coming film. Hmm. There's a lot. I feel like it could... It can wrap it up pretty easily just because the characters for the most part are like they're rounded out or that they have depth in them. I think first one's obviously Miles. I think this one is more Gwen's to flesh out that. And then, you know, obviously Peter fits between both movies. I think they're pretty, they're like the trio yeah. of the, of this trilogy. So they'll be good to, you know, just go straight into the action and straight to the, you know, the resolve of everything that's happened. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting, man. I didn't think I could, I would ever like, perhaps in my lifetime, see like an animated trilogy or franchise be like this bold in storytelling, you know, where it's like it ends on cliffhanger, kind of like, yeah, 
it's not the same, but you know, like an Infinity War esque ending, and then you know you're waiting for the next one so badly, and it comes next year, similar to what you know Avengers three and four did. So, yeah, man, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. I don't know how it's gonna resolve itself. Uh, what, what do you think of the cameos, or not the cameos? At least showing you know the live action versions. Obviously, Donald Glover, Spider Man PS four, all that kind of stuff. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, there was a scene where his uh, flatmate is actually playing it. <coughs> playing yes. Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like done in the graphics of that animated universe. That was really creative. Yeah. I liked all those little things, you know, mm-hmm. those past quick moments of like Tobey Maguire's and Garfield's and yep. stuff like that. No mm-hmm. Holland, though. I didn't see any Holland. No, I would say it's more of a, like an issue with Marvel. They probably didn't allow it. Uh, yeah. But yeah. He, the, he was referenced. Yeah. He yeah. Was yeah. Referenced. Just... I think Donald Glover. Um, coming in as Prowler was really cool. Yes. Like being locked up. Yeah. Because I guess that's another nod to the... Um, I didn't pick up on that. I, was, I just thought it was like a Donald Glover cameo. And then you told me, and I straight after the screening, you're like, oh, yeah, because he, he played like the uncle in... Homecoming, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, that's kind of <laughs> like a good good little nod to it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I really loved all of that. Yeah. And it wasn't so forceful as well. Like, it actually fit with the story. It did fit. The, the only force one was, like, Spectacular Spider-Man. Like, oh, yeah. just <laughs> saying that one line, like, randomly when he's on the part of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say Spider, Spider-Punk's one of my favorites, though. And uh, Spider-Man India. He, he's actually funny as. Yeah. <laughs> he, I reckon, because he's part of the new group now. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And I'm glad, you know, um, Spider-Man Noir. Spider Ham, yeah, the yeah. pig. Yeah, that was it. Annie, or what's it called? The Japanese one. Yeah, yeah, she's in it. I mean, you obviously got Peter, Peter B. Parker, Peter B. Parker, Gwen Stacy's in there, mm-hmm. and then you have the uh, the hologram one, hologram one, yeah. as well. She's in. Your I thought one. that was. I that's a part I didn't really like. Just why? Why was she helping them? You know, I understand Gwen and Peter B. Parker helping Miles because. But she had no reason to help, and she knows what happens if he goes back. Yeah. Like, she knows the consequences. Are. They had one interaction before that. Maybe, yeah. she, maybe she liked him. Maybe. Yeah. Her and Gwen Stacy will fight. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anything else to add? I think we've pretty much discussed everything we wanted to get off our chests. Uh, yeah. No, it's... Yeah. I, I have nothing else to add. It's a great movie. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And if you're one of those people that uh, stuck around after we gave the spoiler warning, um, you're still an idiot. Some people just like to see spoilers before the movie, so. I guess, yeah. yeah. But oh well, uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out March next year, so at least we don't have to wait that long. Um, I'm sure we'll get some footage in the coming months anyway. I, do you, okay, do you think it's going to be delayed? No. Really? Why, why would they delay it for? I just got a feeling it's going to be delayed. It's just too soon. Like, these things just never work out this way. I feel like it'd be delayed to next year or no, like the year after 25. Oh, that'd be painful. Yeah. Um, but I know it was uh, in development like a few months after a cross finish. So they could. Yeah. They could finish it. I just feel like they don't want to rush it if they're under like time restraints, say, you know, October, November this year, they're going to be like, we won't be able to polish it enough in time. We want to perfect this. It's a final one. Mm-hmm. We'll push it back. Just an inkling, but I pray that you are right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Time can only tell. Yes. All right. That will do us on today for our little spoiler review. Hope you enjoyed the review and um, listening to it. And hope you go out and see this movie because it is definitely one that you have to watch in cinemas. And then mm-hmm. when it comes on physical media, you buy it and you buy a Blu-ray player as well because it's just going to be worth both purchases i love that you are telling them to go and see this movie even though they're listening to a spoiler review yeah well still go fucking see the movie see it again see it again i like (laughs) it yeah (laughs) yep thanks for everyone um if you want to read or hear or listen to anything else that we talk about head over to moviegains.com and we do a lot of uh, reviews, box office analysis, and um, physical media stuff on there as well. And if you want to listen to our podcast, Let's Be Real, head over to Spotify, wherever you pod from, and just search us up there and um, give us a little listen. So, yep, thank you guys, and uh, we'll catch you on our next review. Peace.